Good evening, friends. I have some thoughts uh, from Scripture, and I want to share them with you before we retire for the evening, before we go to bed, or put your kids down for bed, or whatever it is you're going to do next. Uh, hopefully these, these thoughts from, from God's Word will help you rest well tonight. Um, so uh, I, I'm going re- to refer to myself right now as a, an aficionado of Scriptures. <laughs> Not so much that I'm an expert, although hopefully I am to some degree, right? Uh, I, I, I know God's Word, uh, but I'm an aficionado in that I'm just intrigued by it, and I'm enthusiastic about it, and I love diving into it more deeply and, and finding uh, intricacies that I haven't seen before. And so I've been reading through the Bible this year, as you know. I'm on, I'm on pace to, to finish it in 12 months, and I... I'm in the book of Job right now, and Job is a long book. And the story of Job, just briefly, he was an upstanding, upright uh, man, a good man. He loved and feared God, and he prayed often for his kids. And calamity strikes his life. His, his kids die, his businesses fail, his, his health suffers. Uh, and and he just he's just suffers in every way imaginable, and God leads him through that, and it's a tragic time in his life. I'm only I'm only uh, through chapter 24 right now, so I think I'm a little bit more than halfway through the book of Job, and uh, it's it's a relatable book, and it's also a tragic story. Uh, And he asked some really good questions, like questions that we might ask when we're going through suffering, like, where is God in all of this? And he seems to uphold this sense of respect for God, that God can do whatever God wants. He's God, after all. Uh, But he he asks some really sort of gut-wrenching, you know, check yourself sort of questions uh, as as he suffers. And his friends, he's got three good friends who constantly say to him, Job, uh, you're suffering because you're you're a sinner, and Job just refuses to embrace that. He's just like I just I don't think that's what this is about, you know. But what's intriguing to me is throughout the book he keeps or several places, uh, Job cries out for what he refers to as a mediator. A mediator. A mediator is a go-between. Like when you and I might have a conflict, a mediator is some someone who comes in to to bring reconciliation. If you and I are going at it, if you and I have a conflict, a mediator brings us together. And so, uh, so, so he, uh, he's, he's calling for, oh, that I would have a mediator. So I want to show you the, show you that. This is in the book of Job. Um, As, as Job is suffering and as his friends are, are calling him out saying it's because of your sin, Job. Um, Job calls for a mediator, but not a mediator between he and his friends, but rather a mediator between he and God. So let me see if I can find these real quick. Um, Let's see. Job. uh, The first first place is Job. Job chapter 9. He says this. God is not a mortal, like a human being, not, God is not a mortal like me, so I cannot argue with him or take him to trial. Oh, if only there were a mediator who could bring us together, but there is none. He says that. That's what he says in chapter 9. And then it seems to strengthen his faith as, as this progresses. Um, in, in chapter 16, after his friends have just you know, shaded him, or, or just uh, accused him of, of, of some, like, unknown sin. Uh, he says, Job says, Even now my witness is in heaven. Um, my advocate is there on high. My friends scorn me, but I pour out my tears to God. Oh, that someone would mediate between God and me as a person mediates between friends. Um, for soon I must go down that road from which I will never return. Um, and then, and then the most hopeful uh, section regarding mediation is chapter nineteen. Job says, "But as for me, I know that my redeemer lives, 
and that he will stand upon the earth at last. And after that, and after my body is decayed, um, yet in my body, I will see God. Um, I will see him for myself. Yes, I will see him with my own eyes. I am overwhelmed at the thought. So he goes from talking about a mediator to he uses a different term, uh, redeemer. Um, so someone who, who will rescue him from trouble. But there's real similarity there. He's calling for a mediator. Oh, that there was a mediator between he and God. And then he refers to a redeemer. And in, in, in chapter 19 in English, it's, it's capital R because he's speaking in a very uh, spiritual way. Uh, manner, a redeemer in a spiritual sense. Now, I want to leave the book of Job quickly uh, and, and briefly and, uh, and read from 1 Timothy chapter 2. This is what Paul says about Jesus. He says, um, let's see, verse 3 from chapter 2 of 1 Timothy says this, um, this is good and pleases God our Savior, for he wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. Verse 5, for there is only one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and people. For there's, um, let's see, uh, he is, this, this, medi he, this mediator, he is the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message that God gave to the world at the proper time. Okay, all right. So the mediator, the redeemer, the savior of the world has always been Jesus. That's the story um, throughout the Bible. What I want to point out to you, point out to you tonight as, a, as a, an aficionado uh, of scripture, someone who is just intrigued and, 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 and always drawn back to scripture, what I want to point out to you is something I've, I've, I've told you before, I tell you all the time, Jesus is in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, people are crying out for a mediator, for a redeemer, for someone who will bring them back to God, someone who will reconcile them to God, someone who will heal this rift of a relationship that they've experienced between them and God, between us and God. And so Jesus has always been the mediator. He has always been the redeemer, the, the savior, the one who will bring us back to God. And I'm just so intrigued when I find him in the Old Testament. So there he is again in the book of Job. Job happens to be perhaps the oldest book in the Bible. I don't have time to explain that tonight, but perhaps 4,000 years old, uh, the oldest book written in the Bible. And yet there is Jesus. He's there again. Here's the point. The story of the Bible has always been the, the gospel story. It's always been the story of Jesus. Man, he, uh, woman, humans, we've never been saved by the, the blood sacrifice of bulls and goats and rams and cows. And, no, it's always been the story of Jesus. That's always been the story of the Bible. And he's your redeemer. He's your rescuer. He's your savior. So run to Jesus tonight. Um, run to Jesus. Rest well, my friends. Hey, uh, public worship, we're going to ramp it up again this Sunday, May 31st. We're coming back to the building for public worship. So if you need details, wearing masks, traffic flow, uh, how we're going to keep you safe in the process, uh, uh, no communion, how we're going to, you know, what are we going to be doing? Uh, go to the website and all the details are there. There's a nice, tidy, uh, well-written sort of document on how we're going to uh, regather for worship. But I'm excited about it. May 31st is the date. It's this coming Sunday. Love you guys. Rest well.